A border deal that many thought would be put in writing this week has stalled. I'm told from my contacts on the Hill, we may be looking at yet another week before something is put forward. This is holding up potential aid to Israel and Ukraine as well. Among the outstanding issues are the Democrats' opposition to stricter asylum and deportation provisions, as well as the Biden administration's unprecedented use of immigration parole authority. Now, with a record, record, and I know we hear that over and over, but I mean, it is unprecedented. The number of illegal migrant, illegal migrants crossing the border every month. What will it take to get the Democrats on board with a deal to secure the border? Joining me now to discuss this and more is Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. He serves on four Senate committees, including the Senate Homeland Security Committee and the Senate, Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor and Pensions. Senator Marshall, welcome back to the program and Happy New Year. Tony, Happy New Year to you and your listeners. Wow, I mean, what what a great number of things we've got about talk about tonight. We better hop to it. So let's jump right into it. Can you yeah. tell us about the ongoing negotiations with the supplemental spending for Ukraine connected to the border security issue? Yeah. So I think number one, James Langford, a, a, a man, a god, a manly god. Uh, a godly man, excuse me, is doing a great job, working his tail off to do everything he can to try to help us secure the border. Just for your, your sake of your listeners, when Republicans talk about this, we talk about this as a national security issue. When my friends across the aisle talk about this, they talk about it as an immigration issue. But I can assure you, 10,000 people crossing our border every day is, a, is the number one most immediate threat to our national security. What's holding up the talks right now is the issue of parole. Joe Biden has paroled over one and a half million illegal migrants that have crossed our border. One and a half million. Explain that. It. Explain that, what that means to our viewers and listeners. Right. So when people cross the border, <clears throat> They're, they can they can ask for asylum. There's a whole host of things that they could do. But Joe Biden is saying, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Here's a work visa. Here's a phone. You don't have to even show up uh, for a court date or, or do anything at all. You are paroled in, indefinitely for all practical purposes. One and a half million people. What the law clearly states is he's supposed to do that on a case by case basis. And he's doing that thousands of people at a time. And that's why we should impeach Secretary Mayorkas now, and in 300 days, we should fire Joe Biden. And even today, the, the Democrats and President Biden refuse to quantify how much parole we should be using in the future. You know, we think it should be down in the tens of thousands per year, you know, not this 1.5 million people uh, over his last three years. Are you confident that we're going to get to a place where a measure is going to pass out of the Senate and go over to the House? You know, I, I, I'm not. You know, what I'll predict will happen is that the Democrats are going to walk away. They're going to try to make it look like we walked away from the deal, but they're going to walk away from this deal over the parole issue. I That's the last hurdle that we have. I think that uh, that we had, we're in a, James has it to a pretty good place as far as asylum goes. It's not perfect, but I think it's 70, 80 percent where we'd like it to be. Uh, and certainly 70, 80 percent better is is better than the current situation. But Tony... Right. I really think that Joe Biden doesn't want to solve this problem. I think he's very happy to have 10, 12, 13,000 people crossing the border every day, hoping that they might pick up an extra congressional seat or two or three. And you look up here in Capitol Hill and two or three seats can make all the difference in the world, let alone a purple state and a Senate, state, a Senate seat. Well, I, I spoke to Senator Langford over the weekend um, about the bill, and he was giving me the, the, the progress, and it sounded like it was moving forward and it was a reasonable approach. If the Democrats walk away from this, after these good faith efforts from Republicans to solve this problem, at least provide a way forward, I, mean, I, I think the only action, the only uh, uh, probably solution in the House that they're going to see conservatives will be to shut the government down. Because if there's no way to address this border crisis, I think they're going to use extreme measures. 
I, I think it's very, very possible. I think even without this issue, it's going to be hard for Speaker Johnson to find something to that's going to work on the House side. He has, what, one or two votes to play with. I think he has the hardest job in the world right now trying to manage that caucus. Um, it, 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 we are truly between a rock and a hard place. What are we spending? $10 billion a day on interest, $34 trillion in debt. Uh, your listeners know the story. There's just no extra money floating around here, and we're all feeling this pressure. We're feeling the financial press pressure of a government that's that's uh, financially broke, as well as this chaos and this crisis at the border, all coming to fruition at the same point in time. So we may have a government shutdown. I could see a CR happening. And uh, maybe, Tony, you're a better predictor than I am. Well, I think if the House, if, if, if the Republicans are not allowed to address the border issue in this supplemental bill, if it does not go forward in this, they're going to have to find a measure to do that. It may be the CR. Uh, and that's just going to it's going to really gum things up even more so than it, that they are right now in the, the House. I, I want You mentioned Secretary uh, Mayorkas earlier this week. You led a no confidence resolution uh, on to in the Senate regarding his failed leadership in the Department of Homeland Security. That, that, that's right. So what we offered on the Senate floor was a vote of no confidence in Secretary Mayorkas. Look, he's derelict in his job. He has broken his oath. Uh, he, he refuses to 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 execute the law of the land that that's that the fence act of of um, 2006 i believe requires him to maintain operational control of the border and there's no one in, in this country that thinks he has operational control of the border and i mentioned earlier he broke the the law as far as how to handle the parole situation so i think because of all those reasons there should be a vote of no confidence from the Senate. Now, the impeachment has to start over on the House side. But my hope was the night before their proceeding started, we put some wind beneath themselves. And I think it's important your listeners also to know that public opinion also helps drive the momentum yeah. of an impeachment hearing. So public opinion is important. And we were trying to help get that message out of exactly why Mayorkas is incompetent, why he's derelict in his duties, why he should be impeached. Yeah, I think you're absolutely uh right that continuing to talk about it, educate the public is extremely important we only have about a minute left senator but you led a coalition of republican senators reacting to a uh, proposed rule from the biden administration that would affect foster parents and essentially could make foster children homeless explain yeah yeah tony uh can you believe we have an administration that wants to make it impossible for Christian families, for families of faith to, to uh, have a foster child or to adopt a child? So the latest bomb that this Biden administration has dropped has said, unless you agree to participate in their gender identity um, facade game and confirm uh, that situation that they would not allow you to to have a foster child or to adopt a child. Who would have thought, Tony, we met each other seven years ago. I knew that you were going to be a person to help me fight for our family values. This administration has done crazy things like uh, encouraging men to breastfeed. They want to take away school lunches if you don't let boys participate in girls sports. And now this one, if you don't confirm to their woke agenda right. um, and gender identity, then you cannot participate in the program. They're and, coming after Christians like you and me. And they're hurting the children. That's, this is ultimately hurting children who need homes, loving homes. It, it's, it's outrageous. Senator Roger Marshall, I want to thank you for leading on Capitol Hill on these important issues, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tony. Always good to be with you.